Hi and welcome to the channel. Stoicism, a philosophy founded around 301 BC, is often misinterpreted as being unemotional or having a stiff upper lip. In this book, Stoicism and the Art of Happiness, we unravel this misconception and explore how Stoic practices can be applied to everyday living to lead a happier and more fulfilled life. Today's video will share five of my favorite Stoic philosophies from this book, which are immediately applicable to any facet of your life. So let's dive straight in. Key Principle 1 excel in wisdom and virtue of self-mastery, while life outcomes are less important. For example, the act of eating healthy should not be carried out in pursuit of a healthy body or good looks. Instead, the focus should be on the inherent value of developing the self-discipline to do so. This is because Stoics believe that losing weight or improving one's health may not be guaranteed by any form of diet. In contrast, the prudent self-discipline though is good and praiseworthy in itself, whatever the long-term results. This concept of self-mastery is further complemented by accepting one's place as part of a whole natural universe, or a concept known as living in agreement with nature. This means welcoming our faith insofar as it is beyond our control. This can be applied in many ways. Stoics remind us that the only thing we can completely control, by definition, are our own voluntary judgments and actions. They practice the concept of acceptance or amor fati, the love of one's fate even in the storm of adversity. Accepting that some situations are not within our control, but by practicing sound reasoning and courageous action, one can rise above any situation. As an extension of accepting one's faith, the next principle is the concept of living in the here and now. This is particularly emphasized by Marcus Aurelius in his writings. The only thing that matters is to live centered in one's present moment. The past and the future are indifferent because they are not under our control. Stoics train themselves to focus on the present moment. However, past and future events are still considered good teaching aids. So let's explore this further. Stoics practice self-reflection on past events and future worries in a calm and logical manner. They think through and work through their emotions rationally to work out if what they are feeling actually brings any productive value. This practice can be uncomfortable initially, but with time, you may find a reduction in mind chatter. Another practice often done is the art of premeditation of anxiety. Premeditation is the opposite of worry. Instead of worrying about future problems, Stoics train their mind and use mental imaging to predict possible difficulties that they might face in any venture. By doing so, they start to rehearse their responses to align with logic and reasoning. This mental rehearsal interestingly has been credited by many high-level athletes to perform at the highest level when the pressure is on. The practice of premeditation is akin to pre-planning for adversity, and when such situations do eventuate, the mind and spirit are ready to react with no hesitation. Key Principle 4 is the indifference to external pleasure or validation. The Stoics always remind that the only thing of ultimate importance in life is virtue, particularly wisdom. Extrinsic things are of secondary value because they are viewed as being inherently unimportant when it comes to attaining happiness and freedom from emotional suffering. What is good includes wisdom, temperaments, justice, and courage. While life and death, reputation, health and sickness, and materialistic comforts are viewed with indifference. However, in the pursuit of wisdom, if one has good health, wealth, and a good life in general, it is embraced with gratitude, but it should never be the end all and be all. In addition, as the great Stoic teacher Seneca put, Stoics come to see life 
as neither being good or bad. In fact, it is the space for good and bad. Put plainly, life can be used wisely or foolishly, with virtue or with vice. For example, the notorious Emperor Nero might have been the wealthiest and most powerful person in the world, but he was a tyrant, so he was no closer to being a good man. While Socrates might have been reduced to poverty, imprisoned, or ridiculed, yet he maintained his virtues in adversity right up to his death, hence is much respected and fondly remembered in both life and death. Key Principle 5 is embracing love and friendship. As mentioned earlier, Stoics are not stone-cold and unemotional beings. In fact, Stoics seek to cultivate natural affection and friendship towards the rest of mankind. They believe that true beauty resides in one's character as opposed to external appearances, and that as one flourishes as an individual by attaining virtue, this will naturally bring us into greater harmony with the rest of mankind. In addition, those who achieve a higher level of wisdom or sage-like mode are encouraged to extend their wisdom to people who lack, even their own enemies, as it is suggested that all human beings have the faculty of reason and therefore the seed of virtue. To me, this last section would demonstrate immense spirituality and tolerance even to those who we perhaps don't wish to interact with, something that I perhaps could strive towards. Upon reflection, I absolutely loved this book. It is packed with so many great stoic virtues that are practical and easy to apply to everyday life. Broadly, the teachings shared today aim to guide us on how to cope in the face of adversity, to accept what you can't change, and change what you can, to seize the day, and finally to remember it is not how long we live, but how well we live that really matters. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please subscribe, comment and hit the like button. Please do let me know in the comments below which stoic principles have impacted you the most. I would love to dwell deeper into this fascinating and very powerful philosophy. With that, take care and look forward to seeing you next week.